Okay, so we're going live in next two minutes. And all of you can share the link from my Facebook and put it on your Facebooks. So, there we go. So good afternoon, everybody. Namaste. And uh, today we come again and we've taken a 15 day challenge to do everything a new topic every day with new guests and new people every day. So in this 15 day sessions, which we have started creating and it's, it's on impulse, we are not advertising it, we are not going anywhere. We just on an impulse are creating something just like with impulse, we get angry. We don't even realize why. We have it all here, right? And we say, oh, I shouldn't get angry. I mean, we know it all. Yet something happens in us and we just lose it. So the last two topics that we covered were, and if you haven't seen it, you can go back on the Facebook and have a peep into it. I will also be putting the links on my YouTube and you can go onto my YouTube channel and subscribe to it and have more of those videos. Now, uh, we spoke two days back on parenting. It was again uh, a program that was created within 20 minutes and there was no nothing that was really done. This is to show you guys, you don't really need to prepare because everything is within you. If you are determined, if you're determined to reach where you want to reach, the only person who can come in between you and your goals is you yourself. So this is an attempt to take off my inhibitions, to help other people to take off their inhibitions and do what you need to do. Time, oh, I don't have time, oh, I don't have this. These are all excuses. So the second uh, session that we did, that was yesterday on a little bit of a difficult topic, I would say it was on intimacy. And I love the way people connected intimacy with sex. <laughs> is intimacy only sex? Or is it beyond that? So if you really want to watch that, you can again go back to the yesterday's recording that is put on the Facebook, have a peep into it and share it with other people. So let me introduce to you my guest. Uh, I have beautiful Dr. Divya and uh, she does yoga for Get Set Up and she's a very beautiful soul and a beautiful person. I'm really, really, really happy to have her here. Namaste. Uh, Divya, you are muted, so you'll have to unmute yourself. Just give them a little bit of a brief of who you are, if I've not introduced you properly, uh, because I introduce on this forum people like my friends, not with just the professional stuff. Okay, so Divya, go ahead. Okay, so I'm Dr. Divya Sitlani. I'm basically a homeopath from Mumbai, and I'm also a trained counselor in the Robert Karkov model. And uh, what else I do is that um, I also have done my teacher's training course in yoga. And I've been teaching anatomy and physiology to yoga students. So that's my forte or my finesse, I would call it. And I love sharing knowledge and gaining knowledge. Always an avid learner. Thank you so much for that. So next guest is very, very hard. Somebody who helped me to understand that sound is music it's not just noise somebody who helped me to you know you can see this gong right behind guys that's a steal from him and his name is Jan Zeiger he I met him in Thailand he's from Germany and I would ask him to request him to introduce himself thank you so much Jans for being here at such a short note Thank you very much for giving me the chance to be with you and meet your amazing friends and colleagues and also giving me opportunity to speak about or, or to share something about the topic of today, which is anger. Well, anger was somehow, uh, my personal anger was something that got me on the track that I'm doing because I had a, um, I'm, I'm very sorry to say, I had a very angry family, extremely angry situation and um, and as a little child, it was very difficult for me to handle this situation. And later on, I went to a school and I had to experience anger again. So at a certain point of my life, I 
went away from all that and I focused on music. And so doing music, I found a space where I could be with myself uh, without experiencing anger. And I had a situation just for with myself. But of course, still, I had to deal with the real life. And ever since then, I am studying all forms of, of anger in, 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 in many extremes. And, um, and anger is a great part, well, a great is a big part of my life still today. So when I go out on the streets, I experience anger. And um, my childhood, I, I, I was in Liberia, West Africa, which maybe, you know, had really terrible circumstances in terms of children wars and, and extreme anger. And, and so till today, it's, it's part of my daily studies to study anger. And yes, that's my, my, my basic position. Thank you so much, Jans. Uh, I am in deep gratitude because, uh, you know, we often think, how can I get angry? And yet when you are talking about anger and how you've been, uh, you know, really dealing with it, I'm really humbled. Thank you so much. So over to Dr. Rashmi Arora. She is a homeopath from Delhi and she's also a meta health trainer, someone who's very close to my heart. And so she can introduce herself further. Thank you, Rashmi. And I'm sorry to interrupt. Can you check it's live on Facebook or not? Because it's not showing any link. Uh, it is live, but it was. Thank you for doing that. The privacy has to be changed. Okay. Uh, it's done. It can show you now. Okay. So, Rashmi, go ahead. Introduce yourself. Hi, Anu. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. And uh, this talk is also close to my heart because I am shuttling between a constructive anger and a destructive anger. So I would uh, today, my expectation from all our learned guests and myself is how to balance between a constructive and destructive anger. Wonderful. That's, uh, that's a brilliant way of putting and so beautifully, uh, Dr. Rashmi said, anger can be constructive. And anger can be destructive. So it's not like we are experiencing uh, uh, emotion that doesn't have a meaning. It can be constructive too. Wonderful. Let's go to the next guest on the panel. That is Sumita Mandirata. She's a child specialist from Bombay. Someone again, very close to my heart. Uh, she's a mother of a beautiful six-year-old. And uh, over to you, Sumita. Thank you, Anu. Thank you for giving me this platform. Uh, so I'm a clinical psychologist and counselor. And I'm also practicing as a read-on therapist. I'm a practicing EFT and matrix imprinting practitioner and also a movement facilitator for brain gym. So uh, just to be precise, these are all different, uh, you know, uh, taglines I would say we have got. But definitely uh, at the end, it is basically how we use all these therapies, you know, just for one purpose. And I believe all these therapies first help us as human beings, you know, uh, to develop our own selves rather than helping somebody else. And my journey of 18 years has been really wonderful because everything what I've learned, you know, I've just tried, it's so nicely used on me first and I have been benefited. I have been convinced that this really works. And that is how I, you know, uh, just dived into getting into more courses. So thank you. And this is really an amazing topic. And, you know, we, we all are human beings. We all have emotions. So anger is a part of our life. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sumita. So I introduce myself. I'm Dr. Anu Mehta. I am right now in Mumbai. I call myself a global citizen, having stayed in many parts outside the country as well as within the country and stayed in all four cardinal points of India. Now, uh, I'm also the pioneer in meta health, advanced clearing energetics and many other emotional techniques uh, which are practiced today in India. But those are just qualifications. Why did I pick up this topic? I find that despite all that I have done, <laughs> when I'm angry, I'm angry. And I really need to give myself time out and come back again if I'm so angry. And there are times when I'm not just angry with myself, but I'm angry with other people. And I'm angry. How did I let them do that to me? How did I take that injustice? 
or why did I let that man who was just 65 years of age allow six year old to be touched by him? How come I never screamed? Because my mom asked me that question. Why didn't you tell me when you were six? I never developed the tools to tell anyone I was hurting at six. And to be really honest, despite all the tools, I have a confession to make, and that is maybe even today, I don't know how to hold myself when I'm angry. And it can be very destructive, not just for me. I break relationships, I stop talking to people. And when I'm really angry, you can send me messages. You can do what you feel like. I just make you invisible. And when I'm angry with myself, I make myself invisible. So Divya, what do you do when you're angry? <clears throat> I, you're muted, sweetheart. Just remember guys, keep unmuting so, and- Yes, 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 sorry about that. No the thing is, uh, there are certain vulnerable people in our lives, especially our parents. So I think, uh, yeah, because uh, it always comes on somebody who we can, you know, manifest. So basically, it's my mom. I do it with her. And then uh, I really thought that I was good in control. On, because see, yoga is not just an asana thing. It's a whole transformation and a whole metamorphosis. So I just thought I'm too good. I don't get angry. And then I got a maid who makes me repeat things, repeat, 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 and everything. And then it just comes out. So it's just showing me, look, it's there. They say, no, you want to know how enlightened you are, go and live with your family. So it's that way, it's still there. <laughs> They'll give you the exact report, Ki, mom, you failed at this. <laughs> oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yes. And uh, you know, Divya, it's amazing that you bring up mom and then the maid and you bring yes. up the triggers. We all have those triggers. Jan, what are the places you get angry? Thank you so much. Well, the places I, I would get angry, for example, when I go out and I experience somebody is doing something from my opinion wrong, whatever, it could be anything. And then I would say, uh, well, why are you doing this? And then it depends, of course, on the situation. And if it's something that really concerned me, then I could get, could become angry. And particularly when it's about ethics, so when somebody would behave bad, like in a, in a, let's say very stupid things, like somebody runs his car fast on a, on a, on a red light and he, he, uh, he gets, he brings dangers to, uh, to people passing by. So, oh, I could just, if I had a, you know, like a gun, I would just run behind him and get him. And sometimes I feel like I want to run, get him off the car. And why are you doing this? And then I'm so amazed about myself. How can I activate such amount of energy just from one moment to the other? Even though I was in a good mood, enjoying the sun, it can change within a part of a second. Absolutely. And do you have control at that time over your emotions? Mm, it, it depends, actually. There are, so over the years, I found out uh, that there are different aspects that keep me uh, uh, getting control. For example, very simple if i had let's say three coffees it's more difficult for me to control myself as if i would drink tea it's a very simple thing right so when i have tea then i can laugh about myself but if i have coffee i will run after him <laughs> so never give jan's coffee <laughs> well well not three you <laughs> know <laughs> just Thank one you, so there's something about the number three with Yans. And what about you, Rashmi? How do you, where are the places that you're angry? I get angry when I feel that I'm not understood or I'm not able to put on my point of view. And uh, I feel uh, that uh, maybe that other person is not uh, recognizing it. And uh, there are, like, like Yans said, there are many aspects to it. It could be from a milder anger. If it's not re-triggered, then it could be more. And I could be, um, I could be um, heavy on people, but more heavy on myself. Okay. 
Wonderful. And so thank you so much for sharing that. Sumita, how do you show your anger and who do you show your anger to? <laughs> okay, so that's an interesting question, uh, a confession time. So definitely I have anger. Nah. The major part of it is since I've got awareness about, you know, anger management and all those skills, what I've learned, I acknowledge it. And uh, with me and my daughter, uh, because that is the most time I spend with her. And uh, now in the COVID times, I would say my husband is also at home since eight, nine months is not traveling. So there are times that we, we get into that conflict position. And uh, so first thing I, I just acknowledge it, you know, even my daughter knows the moment I change my tone, because that is the way she just, she just realizes it. And she just starts telling me, mom, please leave. You know, she, she just starts giving me those, uh, you know, that you are getting triggered now just leave. So I always felt since the time she's growing up and maybe she has, uh, you know, learned with me a lot of other skills. So she gives me that, uh, you know, stop point. Okay, now, okay, become aware about it and stop. So I feel I do get angry. I do get, uh, you know, get into that mode full on. But then uh, people around me just tell me, okay. And I also realize that. And I just leave it, you know, I, I just come out of it. So somewhere uh, I have just learned to, you know, give that gap and acknowledge it. But then there are times that I'm not able to control and, you know, I, I just get at this thing. But I make sure that at least uh, she is not, I mean, I'm getting hurt, but my daughter is not getting hurt to that limit, you know. And luckily she's, uh, I would say, mature enough now to understand and tell me, mom, let's do hookups, you know, I, all the techniques what I have <laughs> taught her. She starts telling me, you know, why don't you go and do hookups? That, that's a brain gym exercise what I do. So she gives me that, uh, you know, point that, you know, now it's time to stop. So I think that that is one happy moment for me. And then I just forget that, oh, I'm angry. So th that's my story. Thank you so much, Sumita. Uh, like I said, confession time. It's not really confession time. It's self-awareness time. Uh, I think uh, there are times when I've not even been aware that I'm angry. I'm sure you've been there too, all of you. And I'm sure people in the audience have also been there at that place. You're not even in awareness that you're angry. And you're just holding it up your chest. So I realized I was angry with authority. And it depended who I was considering to be authority. Because with the authority, and this is how it went and how I realized. One fine day, a friend of mine was having a conversation with me. And I said, Vikram, that's my husband, was shouting at me. And then there was a pause. I'm sure all of you have had that place. And this is how I felt. And she said, how you felt? And I said, I felt like a little child of five sitting in the car and being screamed at by her papa. And the next question was, really? Well, and how did you make yourself a five-year-old and make him your authority? And that awareness that jumped in, that before this, I was angry with my mom because she was supposed to have seen that man who was touching me. Now, it should have been Vikram who had to protect me as a five-year-old. And this information that had just by chance walked into my space made me think that I had silent anger towards anybody who was in authority. Not just that, worse if he was a man. Because in my country, there was so much spoken about women and man and how a woman is not treated well by a man. And I was carrying mass anger in my system. All men are not rapists. All men are not horrible. In fact, to be really honest, we talk about Shakti and, and, and we talk about Yang and Yin. We talk about the two sides of the story, the feminine and the male. And how can our society prosper if women are angry with one part of the society that's men? So that's a confession from my part. And I took steps and I will talk about that later. So if Jans, you could throw a little bit of light on this, we'll start uh, with you right now. Uh, 
what area of your anger was hidden to you and how did you realize that you were angry with your family you know nobody tells you you're angry with me how did you realize that how did I, the question is how did i realize that i was angry with my family yes well well this was uh, simply by the pain the physical pain that i uh, 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 that I, I let's say I, I got as an impact, and it was more the um, the the um, well, the anger was um, like it's it's very it's very difficult to say because at the same time it's a it's uh, I could not express it as anger but I express it as sadness. So, because I couldn't, because I, I, I had no chance to, or for example, for my father, I, I had no chance to express my anger. So if I would have expressed my anger, I would have created more stress in terms of aggression that would create anger. So I, I, find, uh, I had to find strategies to avoid anger. And, and, and yes, so this was more my focus, like not looking at it, avoiding it, then confrontating it, if this somehow answers your question a little bit. It does. It's, it's a fantastic uh, insight that you've given and that, uh, that there was grief that was being shown, there was sadness that was being shown. And if you break down anger, it actually means anger and grief. Every emotion is in duality. And he expressed grief and sadness and showed that because he didn't want to disharmonize and dislocate himself further. And that's that's a very, thank you so much. Uh, let's go to Sumita here. Sumita, how did, how did you realize that, you know, your daughter makes you angry or something in the house and the COVID made you angry? What, what, what made you realize this? So by nature, I'm a very uh, perfectionist kind of a person. So I, I want things to be you know, arranged and planned and organized and this thing. So my trigger is always something which is not organized or something which is not planned. So that would just, you know, trigger me. And it can be anybody. I mean, sometimes I even ask myself, you know, how would that person know that uh, this is my philosophy of life? You know, sometimes it's strangers also, I get that. But like, uh, he, uh, you know, then said that, you know, sometimes it's a swagger. So a lot of times you are not able to express and, and that is the time when I realized that when it, it was, you know, making me so uh, irritable, I would say. Wow. Irritable uh, rather than any other thing. And then I would not speak up. So I would get irritated and uh, I would not speak up. I would just go, go mute. So for me, uh, that's a way of anger. And that's the person that I have been informed by people who are close to me that when you were mute we understand that you are in a bad mood you know so uh, so it, it, it's in a different form so i really don't go on really raising my voice to that level what i think is i, I should not do any noise pollution but then i go mute so sometimes silence is also a form of uh, anger and i have realized that that's and it exactly, happens with me that's exactly what jan said that he yeah. found strategies to deal with it he yes, didn't yes his voice he didn't create and I did the same I mean when 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 Vikram was saying that and I was feeling like a five-year-old I couldn't stand up to the authority I couldn't tell him and I went became mute and and I realized that when I'm mute I'm probably angry very well said uh, what about you Divya what do you how do you uh, understand that you know that, that I was angry with mom and I'm not angry with the maid what really how did you figure that out you'll have to unmute yourself there are certain triggers which i've realized is that uh, sometimes like i am a hurried person so i'm in a hurry and i want the other person also to hurry <laughs> you follow it's like a homeopathic drug you know argentum nitricum then there is another one called lyco which is like you know gold outside and then with the subordinates she screams because with the bosses you can't so these two things are there and obviously when things don't go according to my will, because I keep a justification that this will is the right thing. So maybe and changing that perspective, like look from his perspective, he also thinks it's right, the opposite person. 
that way and uh, usually what happens is that uh, i feel more of indignated or you know when i'm allowed to swallow it because i'm not allowed to manifest it to buy peace just to buy peace i'm not allowed to manifest it so that indignation is more of that uh, morose kind of a feeling which i'm not allowed to manifest that uh, it's a silent thing you know ki i would love to bash you up but look i can't do it like yan said i would love to take the gun and get yes, you haven't seen me you haven't seen me it's like if i'm given the chances like but then i mean it's it's under a cover you know and it's not that it's suppressed but it's like i've bought peace with it and again the next day it's forgotten so now it has more come that understand him yaar he's also going through a struggle and you know the compassion factor but then at times i would love to bash up people <laughs> <laughs> oh, wonderful uh, brilliant rashmi what about you how do you know that people haven't understood you how do you know that how do you decide that people haven't understood you it's not about a decision i know it's sometimes like uh, when whenever there is a miscommunication like these days that it's a it's a digital uh, era and when you are understanding something i mean earlier maybe joint families were more closer and you could you could talk to them you could be there you could feel them now it's more of a digital era and with the covid uh, situation being around it's just the phone the sound so mm-hmm. whenever a sound changes that is the time i feel that 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 is a probable trigger ah so when you can't see people but you I, can I, I, i can't see people i can't see their face okay if i can see their face i can see okay the it's, it's their story but when i'm hearing it comes back as a trigger maybe it, it happened it might have happened somewhere in my early childhood in my early childhood i had a very different type of uh, anger management for myself i would <coughs> i would let go of things but off lately when i'm uh, i had been okay people uh, i mean i i couldn't express myself so i started piling it piling it piling it and then it started like coming out like small vents like a coke bottle coming it up like a fuzz <laughs> okay wonderful so beautiful audience i just want you to know this anger is absolutely normal we've all experienced it in different forms we know where we are limited we know it could be out of perfection we've not felt understood we've not felt connected we have not felt in a certain way we know it and yet how beautifully divya said you know um it's there and i can see it i haven't suppressed it but when it kind of uh, spills over and then i forget it so we tied over so I realized I was judging myself more than anybody else. Yes, Jans, go ahead. I would like I would like to uh, refer to a, a, a point that Dr. Rashmi nicely said, which uh, is, is something that I am looking at as I am studying, let's say, this, this theory of anger, because yes, it's a part of our life. And probably it's based as a very on a very evolutionary state where it was a very important emotion to get us excited to protect our life from whatever the neighbor trying to steal your cave or it's a very archetypal primary um, emotion. But today, as we are in an advanced society, so somehow we don't really need this kind of protection from our neighbors because we are supposed to arrange ourselves in a more different civilized way. But we all have it in our cells. And if you want to understand it, but looking at all the different symptoms or the different stories, we do not really get to the to the core of it we, because it's all different kind of stories. So there are, there, there are for me, from my uh, experience, like there are two levels that are very interesting. So when you mentioned the sound and sound is my my profession i'm i'm a trainer for for sound healer sound healers and and i um, and i realized that all the stories can be focused in one sound uh, same as if you have a homeopathic uh, a dose 
all the information that's needed is in this dose. So you can have similar to a sound. And uh, so in terms of, of anger management, to be available to have essence sounds that we could would call a holoid. And it's the it's a kind of sound layer that that has all the relevant uh, resonance levels to uh, let's say archetypes that would support our integrity so we have can make different choices because we are coming to a situation where we are anger and we don't have the choice because all our resonances are still connected with this primary construction so using sounds uh, because as a sound can hold all the information yes and it's just one sound and we go crazy like yet it's it's so to set up a sound environment that holds the information of harmony will support any um, situation. It works very well for children. It works very well in, in places where you have a lot of aggressive noises. You would have maybe like a bell or a chime or somebody playing a bowl for this purpose. This is one aspect this is, uh, that, um, that I realized and, uh, and after this, I don't know if you want to share it. I have even another one. Yeah, of course. Go ahead. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Then, um, so, and I have a lot of experience, for example, um, so, so when people have like suffering from pain, from a holistic perspective, one could say that you are aggressive towards yourself because you have no ways to handle it outside because it's not possible, as Dr. Shiva said, Diva said, Diva said, you cannot take your gun and kill your neighbor. It's not possible. Police would get you. And at the, at the end of the day, you, you say, okay, it's probably, I wish I wouldn't have done it, right? So, it, so we cannot handle this. So, yeah. but, um, and, and, and this automatic uh, 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 reaction. So when I was doing my, my uh, uh, like my researches, I had a, a group of, 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 of clients and they, they all were suffering from pain and all they could do, so there was no way to therapy the pain. And, 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 and so their idea was how they, to, they had to arrange a life where they would live with the pain because there was no official medicine that could help support them. So when I got this group into a gong meditation, this amazing instrument that's behind um, uh, um, uh, the, the Anu. This, uh, so being in the sound field of an organic plate, not crushing it loud, a very gentle flow sound. So what happened is that everybody in this pain group was after the session, said, oh, I, I, I lost, the pain is not there anymore. And, and this was amazing, like a miracle. Okay, so this was very nice and I was very happy. And I thought, oh, now I have a very interesting conversation going on. But somehow uh, what happened is two things happened. First of all, the, the doctor who was taking care of this group, he got angry because he said, this research is not scientific, you know, and you don't know what's going to happen. We don't know. So he was a little bit boycotting it. And as well, and this was more, more um, experience, people after one week, the pain kept coming back. So the uh, sound meditation was not, the, the effect was not sustainable. So this was somehow, uh, this was, well, well this was uh, bringing up more researchers. I mean, first of all, it's very nice. When you're suffering from pain, you go once a week to a sound meditation and you're one week free of pain. I mean, it's already great, right? And, but then the question was, uh, how does it become more sustainable? And then it was just recently, two and a half years ago and by chance sometimes we have impulses we don't know where they're coming from and i was directed to the work of a um of a, his and his name is dr paul clayton and he did researches on omega fatty acids and he was somehow the first to to really focus i mean there are hundreds of studies on the on the omega or uh, on the omega fatty acids but um so so he found out that they, uh, the way they are distributed are done completely wrong so far or not wrong, but something important was missing. So, and he was working particularly on the fluidity of the membranes of the cells. So I was 
when I, and uh, when I got onto this, because when I was thinking, so if we get an impact from the outside, how do we process it? So, and actually uh, it is that because emotions are electricity in the body, in the cells, it makes the information that all the body acts as one, according to our early primary evolutionary situation. It's, it's, a, it's not about the stories, it's about the electricity. So when we get the impact, where is it processed? We would say, oh, it's in the brain, it's somewhere in the nervous system, but actually it's in every cell. So now we get the impact from outside. And now what happens is due to our nutritional mismanagement, we, our membrane is not flexible at all. And the impact will just bounce. It will, the impact will not be able to access the cell and be, let's say, digested in those parts of the cells. I mean, you all know there are hundreds of things going on in the cell. So they will be just bounced off at the membrane and you cannot really react in a way to it. You react automatically. So what this doctor is an amazing a researcher. He found a way to get the fluidity uh, organic. So like, like, like you can see on the omega six to three, it's a disbalance average. We have like amazing disbalance and the organic is not there. So, and, and creating the, the, the organic balance so made the sound applications be sustainable. So when people would uh, work on their bodies, you don't work on the stories. You, of course, you want to work on the stories, but you also need to work on the body to, to, to make your body being the biological supercomputer that it is designed to be by its nature so that you can rely on the body, for example, that you just process impacts organically and not just being automatically reflected. Thank you so much, Jans, for that amazing insight. And I would uh, invite right now Divya to give us a few tips on how did she deal with her anger? And just like Jans given us such an amazing insight that you can have omega uh, uh, six basically, and also have bright nutrition. And uh, yes. Omega three, omega six is the bad one. Omega-3. Omega-3 is what you need to take along with that. Make your diet okay and take sound along with it. And this has really, really helped Yans. And I'm sure this can help the whole sound healing community uh, wherever you are. Uh, Divya, what about you from the yoga point of yeah. view? Yeah. Other point yeah. of view, what can you bring in over here? What's really happening? Actually, I'll just give you a personal example, Anu. Uh, like uh, on the platform which I am presently working, I had a lot of uh, very, very basic kind of problems. I mean, not with my content, not with something. And things were actually testing me, maybe even the laptop or something. It just like, you know, and I was just thanking my stars that I'm a doctor. Otherwise, they will think that how can this lady goof up to this extent? I just had this degree of mine, you know, like, and you know, my family members keep kept saying, how the hell can they speak like this to you? Why don't you retaliate? There was a time they even wrote something on WhatsApp for me and they said, do it. And I came to my room and I just said, I don't want to do this, but my family is pushing me but because this has come to my universe because I had asked the universe for this learning, but it's coming in a package deal of kick on my rear end. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I can see that it's coming. Maybe my belief is wrong that I've asked for a harder kind of a learning, which they are unable. Then I just thought then, in fact, they even told me that if you, uh, one second, just excuse me, just shut this door. We are happy she's not getting angry now. <laughs> really I've... sorry about this. Really sorry about this intercom thing. Okay, so what happened was they kept testing me, Ki, you're a doctor, how the hell can she speak like this with you? And I didn't know because they were concerned about me, my daughter and my husband, and they said, you better say that you're quitting. And I said, no, God, you have to give me a solution. And then something in a jiffy, I mean, I can see miracles. Something happened and the family discussion turned towards this holiday, which my daughter is giving me. So the mood was like, good, good, good. And they forgot to tell me, Tumne message dala ki did, you, did you send the message? Did you forward the message? And next morning, things were so fine. And I'm still there on the platform. But how to get it to them? 
I just sometimes I write this journaling thing is like a real you know, therapy me for me therapy for me. So in fact now I've realized. But first previously we used to go to a satsang where they used to say to Bhagwan ko chitti likho. Chitti is uh, gents. It's a letter. So write a letter to God. Okay. Ki and it's just. now i realize it's just your soul working or the universe giving you answers because when i'm putting it on paper it's out of my system and then all the other things are working on the plan which me as a person cannot manage but i have seen amazing miracles you know i mean i just surrender write it down on paper and i don't even say it should be i in the end i always write thy will be done o lord not mine wonderful whatever works for you guys understand it's Shade a magic like- potion I'll just add a little bit more to it. Sure, sure. Leave it. Pick it back after four days. Rewrite yes. again. Edit okay. it. Okay. Okay. Leave it back again after four days. Rewrite it again, and you will find soon that the number of words that you've used to express the same thing has reduced. It really works. Guys. Amazing, amazing. You don't really, if you are the kind who's shy to go to a counselor, write. Right, 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 and then leave it. Don't have to go revisit it again. Yes. Open the computer back again. Edit, and you will find yourself editing a number of things. Edit again. Nice. And, It's really and nice. Only you reach a place which is of calmness. So, what do you do, Sumita? Okay. So, uh, first thing I have realized, Anu, that uh, like. Uh, they was talking about pain and connection to anger for me that's a very i am a pain uh, patient for a very long time and i've realized that uh, basically when when it's a cyclic process for me you know i have pain and i i get angry because i'm not able to do certain things i'm not able to you know do certain commitments and it becomes a little difficult and then that anger is coming on people around me so uh, i try to uh, since the time i've learned tapping uh, you know i i really use tapping as my a uh, whole soul you know trick to just uh, work on me and you know the moment i realized that i had started uh, you know understanding that i do a lot of breathing and also i realized that when i'm angry i really you know constrict my breathing you know the first thing i do is my breathing gets very uh, difficult so i i just uh, start doing tapping i just start doing my breathing techniques and also a beautiful technique what i learned from brain gym is hookups so uh, that, that is what i do Can you show yeah, it to sure. us? The tapping sure, sure. is EFT. She's talking about. Yeah. So Learn from. This is the tapping technique. Yes. Yeah. So some and, simple tapping. What I and, can do, uh, and all the points, uh, whatever you feel like, which can be your favorite point. So like mine is always this. So I'm using tapping. You know, when when I'm, and also this helps me to just you know breathe. Uh, you know, make my breathing more slower and better. And then I obviously become more present. so i have realized for myself is i get angry when I, when my brain is shunting between the past and the future you know when i'm in the present i'm more focused I, i know what to do okay this has happened i need a solution i i try to give it a possible you know thing okay this has happened now what next so i get into that action mode and when i get into that action mode that anger you know vanishes somewhere uh, only thing is when i'm just you know sulking it or you know asking myself oh why did this happen that is the time when i get angry so i try to uh, use tapping i try to use these techniques you know like uh, you want me to show a uh, cross uh, this thing uh, hookups also yes so hookups is basically you cross your feet uh, right now i'm sitting so i can just show you can cross your feet and also cross your hands like this you know and then just bring it close to your chest in a position where it is like or simple like you know some people can't do this it's like hugging yourself so just hug yourself and when you are breathing you can just take the tongue up the palate okay so as you breathe you take the tongue up the palate so very slow deep breathing and breathe out from your mouth so breathe in from the mouth take the tongue up the palate and breathe out from the mouth so slow deep breathing what you are doing you can close your eyes you can keep your eyes open whatever you feel like and your body will tell you how many times you need to breathe you know there's no fixed number you can do it 3 you can do it 5 depending on how much you want to do it 
and the second uh, so this is the first part so second is you open your arms you open your legs and then you just connect all the fingers you know like you it, it's like a you know you're connecting the right and the left part of your brain and again you're doing the same breathing three to four times whatever you feel like and you know it, so basically the science behind this is so this is our body midline and then you are you know just uh, putting your arms and your uh, feet in the cross position the blood flow is coming from the extremities to the midline okay because in times of fear in times of any situation of anger or anxiety or whatever you feel like the blood flow goes from the midline to the extremities so we are bringing it back to the midline when you bring it back to the midline it is you know you're also at the same time connecting your right and left hemisphere which is again getting you to the present so the moment you are in the present you know things become much better for you so all of you can just give it a try uh, next time when you feel angry but that really works for my daughter and me because now she reminds me mom hook up so you go go in the hiccup position like sitting down you know that yes. i've just been through anger and i'm crossing myself literally outside not inside and i'm then regulating and balancing myself what a superb technique sumita i'm really really grateful to so ans and sumita and right now let's go to rashmi so rashmi what do you do uh take the anger off i know before that i would like to thank yans dr devya and uh, sumita also and what a beautiful technique sumita and uh, dr devya also what a beautiful technique writing a letter to god and i have a special thanks to uh, yans uh, yans because uh, yans uh, i feel that what he said like it's a cell membrane which is rebouncing so what i feel is that all the emotions are in our cells and they have a reason to be there even anger uh, starting with fear fear anger sadness whatever sadness helps us to integrate things so it is meant to be there in the cell and anger helps to destroy things it's something like uh, brahma vishnu and uh, shiv are all within us so once we uh, but if that that is not being able to be digested by the cell that is the time we reflect it back absolutely so, so there can be a scale which can which we can digest it it depends upon person to person secondly it it could be that maybe that cell membrane we have to we have to strengthen that cell membrane to be able to digest it there are certain times in our life where we may not be able to fall into that scale or we may not be able to strengthen our uh, cell membrane and thank you yans uh, it was a very beautiful insight regarding uh, me i what i recently started anu was i i read somewhere it was somebody's technique i just don't remember the name they start with whenever with an emotion so whenever you are having an emotion just uh, just stop yourself and ask whenever for example where, uh, like uh, you going on the road and uh, somebody walks in and you uh, you just saved him or something like that and you find it like very uh, annoying behavior of somebody so whenever i am annoyed by such instances then what is your reaction my reaction is to speak up to to scream so what the hell are you doing the other reaction could be whenever i am annoyed by such 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 i then put in an action i will do this do it it takes time to master this technique but it does wonderful wonderful so we are having so many techniques that you can use whatever suits you so what works for me and yeah. what works for me is may not work for someone else what works for someone else may not work for you so search what works for you and continue rashmi so that's what is can we have your insight on it anu now of How course you... okay so i'll give you a few exercises a which i do the first thing that i do is i have always guided my students to do this 
we've had anger management in the room where we run the workshops. And what we do is, you know, the old newspapers that you have, just roll it, just roll it nicely. And then we have a table right in front of us like this. Think of the person that you're angry with and just like, just as if you're washing clothes, just hit it, just hit it. And what I really realized that people are so angry. They are holding it in their cells. You are not throwing that out of your system. You're scared to say, I'm scared. You're so scared of saying, I'm angry with so-and-so. But we put on loud music. I give you a room full of newspapers. You have a table right in front of you. And you hit that table with that newspaper. And it needs to make a noise. It needs to have that not music, sound. Sound the ones that you heard back in time where people were screaming, that kind of sound. So you really feel that you're, you're washing or you're throwing this thing away from your system. It's really, really worked. Second tip of the day, we've used bistillery bottles. You know, all those ones which are not, are finished, you've drunk, you've done with, we make them to good use. Just take those bottles, think of that as a person and, 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 and turn it around, and, and turn it around, and turn it around, and turn it around, and just see the smiles that come on people's faces. You know, people look as if they've got out of the facial room. But this is what I do in the class. The sound definitely works. But what really worked for me, what really worked for me, is when I put my head down in my mom's lap, hold her and allow myself to cry. Because today she is there in my life. At that point, all she does is she does this. I feel loved. I feel taken care of. And that hug that she gives me, that cuddle that she gives me, that just that feeling that I could let go makes me smile and makes me go on for the next one week. This is what I used during the COVID, guys. Newspaper did not work for me. Bistillery bottle did not work for me at that point. What worked for me was a human touch. What worked for me was if I could sit with her. The last technique I, I do, this is uh, basically a uh, borrowed uh, technique from uh, Donna Eden. And Donna Eden is one of the energy therapists. And she does this. She creates this like a claw. We can all do it probably. Just like a claw. And think of a person who you don't like and just claw that person in. <laughs> are we doing what are we doing and you will realize when you were doing that how much of energy walked into your hands how much we are holding within um i think we've spoken a lot about transformation of anger i would really like each one of you to create a conclusion here of how you how you see your future and where do you see yourself with your anger? Because anger, like Rashmi said, is not always destructive. It's, we have this in us. The, it's, it's, it's considered like fire. I can use that fire to cook or to burn. And I decide today that I want to cook and create beautiful things with this anger. and not really burn myself or burn anyone else. So uh, Divya, how would you utilize it and your anger? Because we can't be anger free. <laughs> it's not possible. You're muted, sweetheart. You're muted. Uh, see, Anu, for me, this deep breathing and drink a glass of water is like bullshit for me. It doesn't work for me. <laughs> and uh, although I'm into yoga, but it doesn't. I'm being very honest with you because it comes as a catastrophe at times. It's actually catastrophizing, you know, and that time like you don't know what to do. But uh, constructively, um, nothing coming up Im immediately. Maybe in a while it would. No uh, problem. We can yeah. come back. Thank you so much for that. I love being candid. 
we don't want over here that's why it's not rehearsed i don't want what you're not going to do don't give me gimmicks like oh take a bottle energize it and drink it if it's if you feel it's bullshit don't give it to someone but what is it where do you see yourself with anger from maybe even a year from here yans where do you see yourself with that anger that is there in every cell and everywhere well 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 two two, two things well actually three things Well, the first of all, I'm working on my biological status, and on on this is today possible thanks to advanced science. It's evidence based poss uh, po possible, so I don't have to guess and figure it out or believe it. I think it's a huge difference between believing something and really knowing it. It's complete different things, and we we are challenged to move to the field of knowing, and to get conscious and awareness on a scientific. basement um and to 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 have a fundament of of real authentic knowledge so and then and during the uh, during the day then it is also for example if i go outside and i would experience other people or situations where anger happens so how do i set myself in a relationship do i run away because i'm afraid that this anger might affect me and i become a polarity and probably die or kill somebody or what is the option to create or to to transform a collective situation of anger and this is what i'm like i'm 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 what is my aim is and i'm training this and i would like to share you my my most important tool for anger management if you allow me to show you my tool because please, please. Uh, because when i go out it's very difficult i cannot run around with my gong this is you know this is too much but what i can what i do always have with me this is my my tuning fork right and this this tuning fork it is actually it's just the right one it's 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 or there is a signs on the frequencies we know the relationship between frequencies and we have the frequencies of the earth circling around the sun which is 136.1 hertz which interestingly is the 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 tuning frequency of classical indian music so this is a very important frequency and if we have this frequency like like to have it available so simply we 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 play it on the hand then we just put it anywhere i really enjoy the techniques from 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 sumita very much but if we add this and we apply then dr divya will not this is not a fake you will feel it so strong you say oh i don't know what to do with my energy of peace you will feel it because you relate ah bravo bravo you relate to the um to the you connect your electricity with the uh, physiological vibration of nature so connect with nature not only in terms of believing it or having a fancy story but but uh, uh, get the reality of the um of this science you know it's all out there we can take it so so and this is very it works very well you have it it's very easy you have it in the pocket and as well if you meet somebody who is in anger i have so amazing experience of pressing it putting it on somebody chest be completely intuitive just choose any point how to do it so my recommendation is in every family you should have the tuning fork with 136 and it, 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 it so, so me that try on your try on your um, on your daughter and 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 don't sure, read, sure. don't read books about this make your experience and get your knowledge from experience you know don't Definitely. need books save the money buy a tuning fork and work on your uh, on your husband when he's sad for whatever maybe he's not out he cannot work he's frustrated and you say honey no need life gives us an opportunity to spend 8 months together in a room isn't that beautiful yeah, he, he's very say, happy oh, i want to go out to work and say and but with this tool you have you can discipline you can manage your energy and you don't have to uh, let's say make up fancy stories or or yeah, you know but the energy is available so this is a very recommendable super tool and i can see that they i don't know how you see it like the the, the we are in the morning the sun is shining in and yeah. i feel the universe supports me very well with this situation absolutely brilliant it's like thank you like so much it's like an antenna it's yeah. like an antenna you 
sending not, SOS messages and receiving. Yes, not to send another sound with it, the vibration. And uh, for everybody, Jan Zeiger is an amazing teacher. And he teaches this stuff. And we really look forward to having him in India and he teaching us in person. Uh, less COVID whenever that is done with, uh, we must sit down and learn how he does what he does. So uh, brilliant, uh, what you're saying is so amazing. Uh, let's go to, uh, let's, let's right now, I actually got lost for a minute between the, between the tuning fork and everything as to where we were. And we were actually in anger and we were transforming anger. Uh, so how would you conclude Sumita here and Rashmi? So, so uh, basically I, uh, from our talk today, what I understood is anger is an energy. And you know, we, we need that energy. It's a part of our lives. Uh, we acknowledge it. We appreciate it. We you know, uh, own it kind of a thing. And from there only, even if a, a small shift happens, you know, I, I would say transformation is a very big word. A small shift, a small change, you know, when you see the next time when I get angry for myself or uh, when I see my daughter getting angry about somebody, something. So I think that small shift is acknowledgeable, you know, and, and that awareness coming in all of us that, you know, it's okay. It's okay to get angry. And from there, the journey starts that, you know, you, you want to see those small shifts in yourself every time. So if you say next one year, I would say, you know, when even if I have more challenging times or more difficult situations or whatever, but that shift will always carry me and it will make me more confident that I'm able to handle this. I'm only doing it, you know. So anger is my choice. So I have a choice. I, I can get angry about something or at the same time, I can just, you know, reverse the situation and, you know, just uh, make fun out of it. So, so yeah, that's my thought. It's a choice, right, guys? And it's so nice to feel that you have a choice rather than saying it was imposed on you? Rashmi, where are you? How would you look at it? I, uh, I really understood that uh, any emotion is electricity. And we are all free energy devices. We're just moving on with taking in more, taking it out. It's a, it's a process which is going on continuously. It is <clears throat> the problem arises when we get stuck at places. Absolutely. So it's energy, energy can get stuck at one place and flow more at the other end at the Absolutely. same time. Absolutely. So I really love the idea what uh, um, Jan, Jan said just now, that take a tuning fork of one, 136 hertz frequency with you. Jan, I have a question. Uh, do we, uh, if we need to buy it, do we need to buy any uh, specific kind of tuning forks? or something else but this is this is a very beautiful idea carry the tuning fork with you carry your antenna with you put it there okay earth i'm giving back the electricity back to you um, excuse me <laughs> please please say the question again i'm not sure what the question the is the question is what type of a tuning fork people who are mm -hmm. willing to i mean who who really want to buy this and who want to get rid of their emotions mm -hmm. what kind of uh, what what is the tuning fork they should buy or can they buy anything from the market Mm, this is a good question. So, so first of all, in the terminology of the audionic, this science about this, it is not getting rid of the emotion of anger. It's more like transforming it. And as Mita said, little step, but, but it's very easy because like one sound, you said it before, gives you the idea yeah. of the whole situation. And you, you put everything on this one frequency and, and do the shift, okay? So, so yes, I would definitely uh, recommend taking tuning faults made out of stainless steel. I have seen some on the markets, they are made out of aluminum and, okay. and they do deliver the frequency. This, this, is, this is right. And some, they have some fancy application. I mean, I don't, there's nothing that's basically wrong about it, but our, uh, our body system is very, um, is, is in fact, very, very sensitive. And, it, and we just, in the moment we have the information once we don't need it for two three four minutes when it's there it's there then we would pick it up with our breathing we would take it up with our movement we would take it in our sensitivity and then it's there so it's no really need to have it let's say it's well you can do what you want basically but i would recommend 
proper uh, stainless steel uh, uh, so far uh, made in Germany. I don't know whether it's made in India. I'm not sure. But um, uh, um, I think if you are, you, and, and also the, um, there are some more frequencies. For example, not only you have the frequency of the Earth, you can have the frequency of the Moon. And when you ever deal with a like like a, like a woman's cycle or a disbalance, then then they have so amazing just to use the frequency of the Moon to to apply it. Or if somebody is depressive, you use the frequency of the Sun to 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 enlighten. And but before it comes to realizing these differences, it's first of all it needs some couple of let's say experience to be aware of the reaction of the body. So just don't mind whatever frequency you have as long as you start with one and then you go for it and then you will build up. And, and, or, and, and so far, I think um, I have a very nice, um, we have a relationship with, 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 with Anu. And I think if you are interested in the ones that we use from the Cosmic Octave, the Cosmic Octave is a name it's a scientific artist group since 80s of last century. And it's a, it's a, it's a whole um, scientific setup of researching on these frequencies. And, and, and we, have, we do struggle somehow with people who putting this too much into the marketing, like you have promised to cure symptoms and we don't really support this. It's all about self-experience. It's about being practical. And, 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 and we found it so, so effective. And well, please connect with, with, with Anu if you are more up to this and we'll be very happy to support you. And I can tell from my perspective and particularly with children. And it's so, and, and let, uh, I, I love so much to, to work with children actually. And, and, and people say, oh, we have to learn from children. Yes, it's right, but, but go for it, do it. And, and if you give children a tuning fork or, and, and now you work on me, children are so happy to give back to the parents because it's a way they can express the love that they really have. They can access the love more easier than older people. So it's a, at the end of the day, just take any tuning fork. But if you are, uh, uh, let's say, if you want to scale your activities, then I recommend to do stainless steel and so far made in Germany. Absolutely. One more question. Uh, uh, this is actually from Jans and it's got a crystal right at the end. So when, when I work with it, it doesn't have any uh, rough edge on which I'm working with. Mm -hmm. And you can work on any part of the body, like he said. So um, one question. Which, uh, one more yes. question, Anu. Yes. Jans, is this a... Uh, uh, are the tuning forks, these tuning forks different from the medical tuning forks, which are used for audiometry? And I hope the, the, our audience would also like to know about it, who don't know about tuning forks, who will learn from you. Mm, I'm, I, in, 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 this, in this second, I'm not 100% sure if I'm aware of, of, of the tuning fork that I use in audiometry. Mm. And they, um, they are um, like in, in, in German medical, it, it depends very much on the on the frequency that's attuned to. And, and, and there is a lot of uh, uh, signs are on these days around and, and uh, it's a huge area. And I always recommend to have the, 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 the look on the frequencies of the, of the earth, of the nature, of the cosmos. Like our solar system is our cosmic home. So the first of all is the planet earth. And then the, 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 the rhythm, the vibration from day to night is our basic frequency. So, and, and people particular in the, in the commercial transformational world, they tend to be very fancy. Oh, I, I like Chiron, I do Setnar, I take the Pluto going with this, you know, like the constellation of the Uranus. This is all very interesting, fancy stuff, but I recommend to be very practical you know and start with the little step which is looking at the earth taking care of your day then the next step we would be taking the moon and then if you have the moon and the earth and then you you would start tune your brain waves and but if you if you if you claim it you're expected to have a device where you can screen it and if you are a doctor, you have access to medical equipment where you can see that the EEG reflects the impact, which it does. 
then you are in a good situation because you can supply with scientific studies this still just opening field of audionics. It's still new. Absolutely. Thank you so much for that, Jans. Brilliant uh, questioning, brilliant answering. Divya, any uh, insight that you got? You said you'll talk to us later before we tune off. You're still muted. You're still muted. Yes. Anu, I just feel that uh, if at that time we can evade that anger, it's for some beneficial thing. Okay. So this is my learning, my learning. This is what I understood. It's how I look at people, how I perceive the situations, the meaning that I'm giving to the situations is creating more anger in me than actual situation. So I become more mindful of that. And where I see myself in next 10 years or five years or two years with anger is using it constructively. I cannot get rid of anything and I don't want to. I'm proud to be angry. That shows that I'm, I'm alive. I'm proud to be sad. That shows that I've got emotions, I'm not numb. And I'm proud to have all these emotions. I think the trick is how can I keep myself in a place which benefits me and the other people. And that if anger is required to drive me, I will use it. If anger is dry, used to kind of make me run 10 miles to do something, I can definitely use it. And I'm not going to criticize anything from today. So this is where I end the session. Thank you, beautiful people. Thank you, Divya. Thank you, Jans. Thank, Thank you. you. To thank you, Anu. <laughs> thank, thank you, and keep tuning. We'll come back tomorrow again with something. I don't know what right now because we haven't decided. Like I told you, it's a 15-day challenge. Can we do things just like this? Like we can get angry just like this, just like we can cry like this. Why can't we create something just like this? And that's the whole idea, just like this. See you all, and stay happy, stay healthy. Stay in love. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Anu. Very nice session. Bye.